أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله لا نبي بعده رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واهلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي اما بعد اخوه الايمان رحمكم الله my dear brothers and sisters we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying alhamdulillah for enabling us to enjoy another day of ramadan another night of ramadan and we are now in the last third, the last part of ramadan the last ten of ramadan and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam encouraged us to spend the last time of Ramadan by doing more ibadah in order to attain and obtain the Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr which is better than a thousand months. It is a very big opportunity for us because we are now inshallah with the situation that currently we have. It will enable us inshallah uh, to stay up, inshallah, by doing more ibadah, by recitation of the Quran, and also by doing as salah, at tahajjud, and also supplication, reciting the Quran, making the dua, and doing any other adhkara that we know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for every one of us to spend this last 10 of Ramadan uh, to multiply the ibadah towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salawat dan salam kepada Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again make it easy for every one of us to know more about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to be uh, eager uh, to understand more about the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and have the dreams, right? And the willingness to practice the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in our life. Believe me, if we love the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we will be with him in the hereafter, in the jannah of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Right? It is not like loving other person. It is not like making other person as our role model, as our idol. Right? Maybe in our jahiliya time, we took uh, movie stars or uh, a superstar as our uh, icon, as our model, right? And we try to imitate whatever he dressed, and we try to buy every accessory that he used to wear, for example. But of course, if we do so, he never knows about us, right? And he never care about us even. But if we try to imitate, to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in our life, the way how Rasulullah dressed. The way Rasulullah ate, the way Rasulullah sallallahu told people, the way Rasulullah prostrate, the way Rasulullah deal with people. If we intend that we want to follow the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in those action, inshallah, inshallah, we will be with him in the jannah of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Amin ya rabbal alamin. My dear brothers and sisters, tonight we are going to cover the juzu twenty one of our daily tafsir. This Juzu 21 will cover the last part of Surah Al-Ankabud and the whole Surah of Arun, the whole Surah of Luqman, the whole Surah of As-Sajda and the beginning uh, uh, part of Surah Al-Ahzab. I would like to highlight about the Surah Al-Ankabud. Maybe you have something in your mind. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use the word Ankabud, which means spider, to name this surah. There is a very interesting part about this spider. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, in Surah Al-Ankabud, ayat 41, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَوْلِيَاءَ كَمَثَلِ عَنْكَبُوتِ اتَّخَذَتْ بَيْتَ وَإِنَّ أَوْهَنَ الْبُيُوتِ لَبَيْتُ الْعَنْكَبُوتِ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the example of those who take a lies other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like the spider who takes a home. And Allah said, 
wa inna awhan al-buyuti la baitul ankabut and indeed the weakest of homes is the home of the spider if they only knew Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the weakest home is the home of the spider but subhanallah you can check with me you go to your internet you go to Mr Google and you type there that the spider web is stronger than the steel subhanallah right quantitatively spider silk is five times stronger than steel remember five times stronger than the steel in the eyes of Allah it is the weakest home subhanallah the weakest material is taken by mankind to make the strongest material to defend themselves right the bulletproof that the, the the army the force are wearing sometimes wear worn by the, the police for example right the bulletproof it is made from the weakest material in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but in the eyes of mankind it is the strongest stronger than the steel subhanallah and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa inna la, wa inna awhan al-wujuti la baitul ankabuti law kanu ya'lamun the weakest of the homes is the home of the spider it is the example that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that when we find try to find allies right the supporters of life right the helpers of life apart from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we just look for someone or something that is weak right why not we go directly to the almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-qawi al-aziz al-mateen the stronger one the strongest one that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in most of the ayat of the quran trigger us to use our mind in the proper manner right allah doesn't want us to do something without thinking it right without without learning what is the replication what is the, the 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 end result of doing something in islam that's why in 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 islam someone is not obliged to do the religious duties before he reach or she reach the age of the puberty right al someone who have the ability to distinguish between right and wrong and that is the limit where someone is obliged to perform the duty and the responsibility in islam my brothers and sisters in the last part of Surah Al-Ankabut, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about the Quran, talk about the believers, those who believe in the Quran, and also the connection between the Quran and the previous book. So Al-Quran has close relationship and close link with the previous book, right? Name it, be it Torah, be it Zabur, be it the Bible, Injil, be it Suhuf. All these books, the divine books that have been revealed to the prophets and to the messengers before Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, brought one mission, brought the same message that is brought by Al Quran, which is to invite people to worship Allah subhanahu wa taala alone and not to associate anything with Allah subhanahu wa taala. So. In this surah, in the, in the last part of surah uh, Al-Ankabut, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also reminded us not to indulge in unnecessary argument, especially when it comes to the religious matter, right? About deen, don't do the argument. Don't argue with man, right? Because Because the rih, the chemistry will go. If you keep arguing with your Muslim brother about the religion, Believe me, the ruh that you have, the chemistry that we have with your friend towards your Muslim brother will go, right? And slowly the unity among Muslim brothers also will go, right? Please try to avoid as much as possible not to debate, not to argue about the religion, right? If you think that you don't know about something, learn it. If you want to ask, ask in the proper manner but not in order to argue. That's why we are also taught by our religion not to ask something to the scholars with the intention to argue and not also to compare his answer with the answer that we got in our mind. If you want to ask, Allah said in Quran, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ That is the direction how to ask something if you don't know about something related to the religion. فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ Ask the expert. إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ If you don't no but most of the time we we tend to try how how deep the knowledge of the sheikh that is giving talk to us in islam it is totally prohibited please don't do that one because 
despite of the the, the benefit that we might get, but also it will create the the grudges in the heart of the people when we argue with them, right? Insha'Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, بَلْ هُوَ آيَاتٌ فِي صُدُورِ الَّذِي نَأُوتُ الْعِلَمِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the Al-Quran should be the clear ayat in the heart of those who are given knowledge. So Al-Quran, the one that we used to read, we should move from the text of the book into our heart. So from the pages of the book into the pages of our life. Alright? That is your duty. That is my, my, my duty. How to transfer the teaching of the Quran, which is found in the pages of the book, to the pages of our life. So our life will be blessed by the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you remember what the answer of Aisha radiallahu anha when he was asked by the Sahaba about the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What was the answer of Aisha? She said, Kana khuluquhu al-Quran. The akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the Quran. If you want to know about the Quran, look at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? So we want to move the teaching of the Quran from the pages of the book into the pages of our life. So every single moment of our life will be meaningful in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will be beneficial for other mankind. My brothers and sisters in Islam, we move to Surah ar -Rum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discuss a lot of things and a lot of lesson in Surah ar -Rum. It was started about the fight between the Byzantine, which is a room, the Rome, right? And with the Persian Empire at that time, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about how the, the battle was, went on, and then later on who will be the final winner in the battle. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us about the tendency of mankind towards this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah ar rum that Al-Insan, the mankind, the orientation of mankind is the dunya, right? Most of the thing in the, in, 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 in the mankind, right, uh, mindset is about dunya. First, how to increase the wealth, how to earn more, how to possess more of these uh, worldly things, right? How to have more children, how to have more property, of to have more account in bank and so on and so forth. That is the orientation of most of the mankind, right? But they are unaware about the, the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ذَلِكَ مَبْلَغُهُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ Right? That is the only thing that they know about the dunya. The highest level of those who do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is how to earn the dunya material. The matter of the dunya. That is the highest knowledge of those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How to live a good life, how to earn most money, and how to have most properties. That's it. Right? Then if you think about the hereafter, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us as a mu'min, as a believer, we should have, we should change our mindset. That our orientation should be the hereafter. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى And hereafter for sure is better for you than this dunya. Because why? The life in the hereafter is eternal. It is everlasting. It is forever. But the life of this dunya is temporary. Right? It will end one day. Right? We will leave behind everything that we have. That's why, lucky those who build the house in the hereafter. Do you know that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa always encouraged us that if we manage to perform 12 raka'at, 12 raka'at of salat sunnah every day, and the ulama try to make it what kind of sunnah is mu'akkad and some are not mu'akkad, and we manage to aid, the Prophet said, whoever managed to perform 12 raka'at a day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build a castle for us in the Jannah. Right, the ulama classify the 12 raka'at are two raka'at before salat al fajr. Right, uh, salat sunnah al fajr, four raka'at before salat al zuhur, two raka'at after salat al zuhur, two raka'at after salat al maghrib, two raka'at after salat al isha. 12 raka'at. If we manage to constantly do it with the istiqamah, 
the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that Allah will build for him, Allah will build for us the castle, right? The 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 the, the house, the big house in the jannah of Allah subhanahu wa taala. And every time we say Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Every time we say Subhanallah, one tree will be planted in the after will be planted in the jannah on our name. You can imagine that one. Right? Be the rich people in the hereafter. Right? Don't dream to be the rich people in this dunya because this dunya will be left behind. My brother and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanallah, right? <clears throat> Allah wanted us to see, look, those people who came before you, Namruz, right? And then Fir'aun. And then you can mention any other people who who, who known in the history as the big, the one who created the greatest civilization. Where are they now? Where are they now? Can you see them now? No. It's gone already, right? It's gone already. Nothing left. And it is the example of life. No matter how serious you are, right? No matter how, how hard you try your best to earn this dunya, one day you will leave them behind you. So, وَلَا الْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْمِنَ الْأُولَى. سبحان الله. And Allah سبحان الله also said in Surah Al-Rum regarding the, the the sign of the greatness of Allah سبحان الله through the creation of ourselves and also through the creation of our spouses, wife, right? And Allah سبحان الله said that Allah will will grow love, affection, and mercy. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً Some scholars discuss about what is different between مَوَدَّةً and الرَّحْمَةً Love and affection, right? They say love and mercy, الرَّحْمَةً, right? Uh, and some of them say that love mostly based on the physical appearance. So that's why after getting married one year, maybe the level of love is decreasing, <laughs> right? Because the body of our spouses is not as beautiful as before, right? Especially when she delivered the babies, five children, for example. Of course, the body is not as before, right? Not as beautiful as before. That's why the love, love, which is built based on the physical appearance, will decrease one day. But Allah said, wa rahma, the mercy. Mercy is mostly based on the spiritual quality. Not the physical quality. So that's why even though the, the, the face of the wife is no longer beautiful, but subhanallah, the attachment of the husband to the wife is getting more. Because why? The quality, the spiritual of the quality of the wife is getting better. She became more religious, right? More pious, and then more respectful to the husband, more caring. Subhanallah. That's what we need as men, right? From our wife, right? When we reach home, after work, we want somebody with us in, in the door, right? And then taking our bag, giving us a glass of uh, coffee or tea, right? And then when we are tired, try to massage us, asking what's, uh, how's, how's work today, how is it going on, everything all right? Subhanallah. That's, that's what we want from, from the woman. And that is a rahmah. Even though she is no more beautiful, but because the Rahmah is there, Allah put and casted the Rahmah inside the heart of the believers, the marriage can remain even after 50 or 40 years. Right? Mawaddah wa Rahmah. And also, one of the, the signs of the greatness of Allah uh, that is mentioned in Surah Ar-Rum is the, the similarity of the languages and the skin. Right? The color of our face. Right? The language that we are talking. Right? And also what else? Uh, the, the culture, right? The face, right? The, the shape of the face. Some, some face uh, white color and red, like Indian, red Indian. Some black, like our brother from Africa, for example. And fair from the chi Chinese people. And we are in Asia, maybe this, this fair skin, skin that we have, right? Those are not to judge other people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in that different, in this similarity, is for us to know each other, right? Not to boast over another, not to show our superiority over another. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَارَفُوا For you to know each other, right? Not to say that I am better than you because uh, my, my skin is lighter than you. No. Brother, what underneath the, the, the skin is the same blood. 
the same flesh. It is the same red blood underneath the skin. Do you know that one? Try. Try, try to, un, to, to skin your, 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 your body. You will find that what underneath this, the same red blood, the same flesh. Right? So, it is not about your appearance that will be judged by the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is about what is in your heart. Right? Walakin, yalnur ila qulubikum wa a'malikum. My brothers and sisters, and also Allah talk about uh, the formation of the rain, right? Look at the sky without the pillars. Subhanallah, right? It's amazing, right? Look at the house without the pillar. How, how high and how tall the building can, can stand without the pillar. You can how high the sky is. None of the pillar is found there. Who created that all? It is our God Almighty and we are so lucky that because we believe in that creator, right? Which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala touch about the fitrah of mankind, right? According to the fitrah of mankind, all mankind actually have the tendency to submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there are some temptation. Temptation of the desire. The temptation of the shaitan. The temptation of the iblis. The temptation of the friend, the temptation of the partner that influence the final decision to follow the fitra, right? Or to ignore the fitra. So be careful of choosing the friend. Last time we talked about it, about shortlisting the friends in Facebook, in our Instagram, and other social media. Just be friend with those who think who you think that can help you getting closer to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah talk about the character of mankind. When they are in the time of difficulty, they try to ask Allah humbly, right? Tadarra'u ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes crying. Check yourself. Let, let me check myself. When we don't have money, how do we have? I think our ibadah is better when we don't have money, right? <laughs> we used to go to the masjid, right? We do more dhikr, more ayat recited from the Quran. But the moment we earn the money, the salary, how long you can stand and sit in the masjid when you, the money is in your hand? <laughs> Subhanallah, right? But when we are broke, in the end of the month, oh, oh, the time to get close to Allah, the time to prolong the du'a, time to prolong the recitation of the Quran. But the moment the money in our bank, mashallah. No more salat sunnah, no more qabliya, no more ba'diya, no more resting hand and making the dua. That's us, mankind, right? But of course, we have to change this one because it's not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted from us. My brothers and sisters, and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that when in the time of disaster, when the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came, when the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to the prophets and the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only people that are saved by the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the believers is the prophet is the messengers of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so be with those good people be with those pious people so when the the, the punishment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes allah will protect us allah will save us from the disaster and the punishment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then we move inshallah to surah al-luqman when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, talk about a lesson in surah luqman luqman was a wise man right he was a wise man. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started the surah talking, talking about the good the character of the good doers. Al-Muhsinin. Huda wa rahmatan lil-Muhsinin. Right? The characteristic of the Al-Muhsinin. The good doers are, I hope you and me are among those people. The one who constantly perform the salat. Check yourself. I do check myself. Uh, are we the one who, you, who constantly performing the salat? If we are the ones, be happy. Because Allah will consider us as a good doer, right? As a good people. What else? Zakat. Check your income monthly. Have you paid your zakat? Right? From now onward, please take 2.5%. Cut it. Be it from the gross or from the net salary that you have. Take it. Don't, don't, don't eat it, right? By the moment you receive the money, cut it and give to these deserved people, right? Because why? That is the filth. The dirt of the money that you earn, that is the right of people that you are not allowed to eat. Give share to the daily one. 2.5% to 
please take it out from your income and give it to the needy people because that are the indicators that you are good in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this surah, surah al uh, uh, what? Surah Luqman, there is uh, the dialogue between Luqman and his son. Good lesson for you and for me. Please have a serious talk with your children. Find the good moment to have serious talk with your children. Have you done that? Call your boy, right? Go somewhere, have some food, maybe uh, in the lake, uh, in the seaside. Talk to them as men, man to man talk. Right? You know what the discussion between Luqman and his son said? Subhanallah. وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ يَا بُنَّيَّ The first one, لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ Do not associate anything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Purify your tawheed. And what about us? What is the first message you said to your son when you talk to him? Son, when later you grow up, huh? Uh, ensure that you, you you get a good job, huh? So you, you earn more money and you can give that when I retire later. That's what we the message we send to our children, right? Don't do that one. Call him, call her, your daughter, your children. Say to him, La tushrik billah. If I die earlier than you, please, I want you to keep worshiping Allah subhanahu wa taala, right? I don't want you to do shirk to Allah subhanahu wa taala. And then. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانَ Be good to your parents, right? Never send your parents when you grow up to the old people's house, right? Come on, man. When you are a baby, right? when we are the baby, who took care of us? Our oh, mom. When we cry in the middle of the night, who took care of us? Our oh, mom, right? Who woke up first? Is, is it your dad or your mom? When you cry, when you are a child. Is it your dad or your... Your mom, it was our dad, but our dad will wake up your mom. Hey, 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 wake up, your kid is uh, crying. And then he, he continued sleeping, right? That's why in Islam, when some sahaba asked the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, who should I give uh, my love to? There is a song, right? Who should I give my love to after Allah and Rasulullah? What the Prophet said? Your mother. What else? Your mother. What else? Your mother. And then your father. Mom, mom, mom. And then dad. Because whatever has been done by mom cannot be repaid. You cannot pay your mom. Don't ask your mom later when you become successful. Mom, how much money you have spent to raise me up? I will pay you in cash. Na'udhu billah min dhalik. Na'udhu billahi min dhalik. Never do that one. That is the discussion between Luqman and his son. Right? And then be thankful to Allah. Uh, this is good. La ta'ata li makhlukin fi ma'asiyatil khaliq. What does it say? No obedience to the creator in disobeying the creator. Right? No obedience. No obedience to the creator in disobeying the creator. Right? So if you want, if your dad call you, come on, I want you to buy a, a, a bottle of wine. Like, come on, that's haram. Right? You, you don't follow, right? Because it's haram. You should disobey your dad in that sense, right? Because when you obey him, it means you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Luqman said to the son, Akim salah, perform the salat. How many of us remind our children to perform the salat on time? In Jama'ah. Unfortunately, my brothers and sisters, when we ask our children to pray, hey, hey, time to do salat. But we are still watching TV. What kind of example is that, right? Of course, our son will not listen to us. When you say do, we do first. We said don't, we should live first. That is the lesson that we learn from the this surah. My brothers and sisters, we move to surah sajjah, right? We move it quickly. And do you know, in Surah Sajjada, people accuse the Prophet as the one who created and invented the Quran. Subhanallah, right? That's why Allah met the Prophet illiterate. Right? Allah met Prophet as a ummi. Illiterate. He doesn't know how to read nor to write. It is for him not a weakness. For us, it is a weakness. Right? But for the Prophet, it is not a weakness. It is a miracle for him. Why? 
you can imagine if Rasulullah was able to write, was able to read, of course, the accusation of inventing and creating the Quran will be stronger because, oh, Muhammad is able to write, is able to read. Of course, he made it by himself. But Rasulullah made Rasul illiterate. Ummi cannot read nor write. For him is the mu'ajiza. Why? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect him from being accused of inventing the Al-Quran. And Allah said in Surah Sajdah, تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُ مَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَتُمَعُوا وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Allah said, فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ يَزَامِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ The reward of the, the believers, right? The reward of those who believe in Allah in the Jannah, subhanallah, right? Subhanallah. But what did they do in the dunya? تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ Their sign is far from their bed. Right? It's far from their mattress. It means they sleep less at night. Right? And Allah said in Quran, كَانُوا قَلِيلًا قَلِيلًا مِنَ اللَّيْلِ مَا يَحْجَعُونَ كَانُوا قَلِيلًا مِنَ اللَّيْلِ مَا يَحْجَعُونَ They sleep a little at night. تَتَجَفَ جُنُوبُهُ مَنِ الْمَضَاجِعَ Right? They sleep less at night. What? Watching TV? Watching uh, World Champion? Or Twittering? Or Facebooking? No! Right? They ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they supplicate to Allah, they pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dua, tahajud, and then also infaq. My brother and sister, I would like to suggest you to do one thing. Inshallah, after the corona is over, Allah will make it easy for us. What, what is that? To do the daily infaq. Do you know that Rasulullah told us that every day there are two angels of Allah who make the dua to Allah. What is the first dua? Allahumma a'ti munfiqan salafan. One angel don't make dua, oh Allah, please give the better reward, right? For those who donate and give charity today. The angel will say, multiply him in reward, ya Allah. Replace whatever is given by him today, right? In the better way. And the other angel will say, oh Allah, please destroy Right? Who is stingy today? Subhanallah. So, later on, when the corona is over, inshallah, when we go to the masjid every day, right? One ring it, two ring it. If we are in Indonesia, we are 1,000, 2,000 every day. We already got what? The dua from the angel. Of course, when the angel is making the dua, there is no barrier. Immediately accepted with Almighty Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? My brothers and sisters, last part of Surah uh, tonight is the beginning of Surah Al-Ahzab. In Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started the Surah to fear Allah. Ittaqillah. Right? Allah said in Surah Al-Ahzab that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayuhal nabi, ittaqillah. Allah wanted us to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all conditions. Right? Be it when we are in the secluded place or when we are in public. Ittaqillaha subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also Allah reminded us to follow the Quran. Our guidance, our imam, right? Our manual of life. Believe me, my brother and sister. Read the Quran. Read the Quran until you cry, right? I cannot convince you. I cannot convince you to say, please bring this, uh, what we call it? Eat the sugar or eat this tea. It is, it is sweet. I cannot convince you to say it is sweet. Please taste for yourself, my brothers. Right? Believe me, when you keep reading the Quran, you will cry. Right? When you read Quran in your salah, you will cry. Believe me. Wallahi, believe me. Right? What you, you just need to do now is start doing that one. Right? Read the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said that in the beginning of the surah, that Allah cancel, Allah cancel the adoption system in Islam. No more child adoption using the name of the adopter. Right? For example, I adopt my son, I adopt uh, other people's son, and I name him, for example, Muhammad. Muhammad bin Fatani. I cannot do that anymore. It was happened in time of the Prophet. Rasulullah Muhammad adopted Zaid bin Haritha and he changed the name of Zaid to Zaid bin Muhammad. Right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the surah that Rasulullah is not a father to a man among you. So Rasulullah later changed his name again to Zaid bin Haritha instead of Zaid bin bin Muhammad. So inshallah, my brothers and sisters, 
uh, in Al Ahzab, it's about the story of the battle of Al Khandar, the battle of the trench, where the number of the army are not equal. The number of the people uh, of the kuffar, the kuffar was ten thousand versus three thousand from the Muslim. Ten thousand versus three thousand. Logically, who will who will win? Of course, the ten thousand. They are number, right? But in the eyes of Allah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said. كم من فئة قليلة غلبت فئة كثيرة بإذن الله. There many times happen that the small number defeated the big number because of the permission of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Be with Allah and Allah will be with you and the number doesn't matter, right? Doesn't matter. The quality is the matter when we are with Allah سبحانه وتعالى. That's all what we can share with you tonight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit us from what we are discussed, from what we are discussing. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us more love towards the Quran, right? Make this book is our best friend, right? There is one ulama in Indonesia named the uh, ulama Buya Hamka, right? Sheikh Hamka. He used to read Quran until he fall asleep before he go to bed, right? What a nice best friend that a Quran right, will be. We want that to be part of our life. You feel uneasy when you don't see your Quran, right? It is like you make your handphone as your best friend now, right? So change it. Make the Quran as our best friend. If you don't see the Quran, if you don't look at the Quran, we feel something is, is missing. Just like when you don't open your WhatsApp and Facebook, you feel something something wrong happened to you, right? No, I don't سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك بسم الله الرحمن والعص إن الإنسان لفي خص إلى الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصل بالحق وتواصل بالصبر والعفو منكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.